beloved faces from times past and times future, I hope too, um, as well as uh, two gentlemen who will be uh, speaking with us a little bit later, although not much. Um, 1.2, agenda revisions. Uh, there are several. Um, I suppose taking them in order, what I would like to do if there are no objections is pull 9.2 Cross Vermont Trail Project uh, from Board Operations up to 1.5 following CB Fiber so as to um, not make Great Western sit around for too long. Um, the second agenda revision that I would, uh, and sorry, no objections, correct? Okay. Um, second agenda revision I'd like to suggest is inserting, um, I think it would make sense perhaps under, uh, when we get to policy, inserting an action item um, relating to what I sent around, renewing Washington Central Supervisory Union's 2017 decision to join the amicus brief in favor of Grimm um, versus Gloucester. And we can talk about that in greater detail when we get to it. So that would be 7.2, amicus. Um, I would like also to, uh, oh sorry, no objection I hope? <laughs> no, great. Um, I'd like also to add an executive session about 15 minutes at the very end um, per Title I, Section 313.3 regarding evaluation of an employee in the event, Deborah. Um, this is a check-in for us. Um, I hope, any objection? None? Great. Okay. Uh, and I might just, at this point, make an announcement that after adjournment of this meeting, Floor and Jonas and I will get together with Deborah in open session, if anybody cares or wants to stick around for it, after our executive session, to just plan out the next meeting's agenda, the December 4 meeting agenda. So just so that's clear, that's happening after everything else is, is done and we're adjourned. Um, public comments. Wait. Oh, sorry. So, sorry. One, so having said that, yes. what's your agenda? Maybe, maybe can you assign somebody to be timekeeper? Lord, thank you so much. Is George? George isn't here. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody want to volunteer to be a timekeeper? I can do There aren't times on there. There are times that. <laughs> um, <laughs> at the beginning, you can yeah, um, say, it's we're just gonna, uh, Yeah, uh, at the beginning of the agenda item, I'll just arbitrarily decree. <laughs> 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 Um, Scott, as far as agenda revisions, under finance, I'd like to discuss the bill that's in the warrant for um, elections. Sure. Based on some of the minutes from past meetings and that I didn't see a resolution and yet I saw bills, so I wanted to discuss that. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it better for finance or for board orders? Oh, I don't orders. know. Finance? Finance? Okay. Is that okay? Is it's and during finance, finance. We have it as part of our finance. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that's discussed as yes. the warrant's going around. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, all right then. Uh, ready for public comments? Are there any public comments? Not at this point. Okay. Um, you're very welcome, nonetheless. Um, so, next is um, next up is is David Healy with CB Fiber, and I think Keith 
I will also be a kind of discussant along with this. Yes. Understanding. We're looking about 15 minutes. Oh, less. Is that all right? Sure. Great. Do it even less if you want. <laughs> but I want some questions as well. Anyway, um, my name's David Healy. I'm from Calus. Uh, I'm the Calus delegate to the CV Fiber Board. And what is CV Fiber? Um, many of you were at town meeting in March of 18. There was votes in most towns to join or not join a Central Vermont Internet group, which is called a Communications Union District, which is a municipal entity similar to a fire district or whatever. It can get municipal bond money, but it can't get anything under the property tax. <laughs> so that's the way it, a municipal entity works. It's not taxing authority. Um, so anyway, the um, and so it's under state statute. And, it's basically community run, community developed. Our mission that we adopted this year, last year was provide Central Vermont residents, businesses, civic institutions with universal access to a reliable, secure, locally owned, and governed communications network able to grow to meet future community needs. Um, I think we're pretty aware in, in, in the organization that educational institutions need a lot of bandwidth in their internet. And so we're hopefully you know, going to be partnering with you folks as we go forward with what we're doing. And our success, we're hoping to model our organization after an organization in East Central Vermont called EC Fiber, which there was a lot of skepticism that they'd be able to pull off what they did. They now have fiber to every premise in 23 towns in East Central Vermont. So Royalton, Randolph, Barnard, all those towns now have fiber to the home. And they did it on their own. <clears throat> so that's our emulating the model. Um, current status of where we are. It's been, as you well know, as a, as a, a volunteer guided organization. It's a lot of work and very little time if you donate to it. But in any event, we're, we're moving forward. We've got a, a community survey out there, which if you haven't seen, post it on your front porch forum. Um, actually, how many people have taken the survey? Lot. So we still have a lot of outreach to do. Just to let you know, a little competition here, 21% of Middlesex residents have filled it in, followed by Worcester with 17% of residents. Callis is at 13, Berlin is at like five, and East Montpelier I think is at about 10. So there's a lot of work we still have to do to get people engaged. And we'll also be doing a survey in the next month of businesses and organizations slightly different kinds of questions to find out what people's needs are, uh, organizations' needs are, including schools. Um, we are, um, we, in the last year, we received three grants for planning, uh, one from Think Vermont, which is the State Agency of Commerce and Community Development for $12,500. We got a USDA Rural, um, rural Development plan, Business Planning Grant for $25,000, and then just this week, we got a $60,000 grant from the state's Department of Public Service, a broadband innovation grant. So we're combining all those monies to put out, um, we put out an RFP about two weeks, two weeks ago to do a feasibility study first, and then a business plan second, because that's the way the state's grant wants it done. If we have a successful business plan, or if we have a successful feasibility study, we're eligible to, to borrow up to $4 million from the Vermont Economic Development Authority, um, which would get us going. And I can tell you that $4 million will build about 120 miles of fiber. So it's a pretty expensive proposition. Uh, the estimates I've done per town is about, it, like countless, it'd be about $3 million to run fiber down the network. And that's not connecting to your house. That's getting it down to you get to your house. So, we're hoping to have the study complete, studies completed by the end of the summer this year, uh, 2020, and then doing the first phase construction sometime in 21. So it's a ways out there, unless there's a golden egg that drops on us in some form or another from you know, any of the, um, the federal um, discussions in the next election. There's a lot about broadband, and so there may be more money available in the next few years to advance what we're doing. But first off, we need to be successful at the first project, and that'll lead to the next one. Um, I have a lot of slides that I have information on that I'd be happy to you know, provide to Keith so you could put it up on the... Uh, or if you'd like to email it to me, I can distribute it out. That'd be great, and because I, there's a lot of data here, and 
Um, some of it's useful, some of it's not so useful, depending on who you are. But if you haven't taken the survey, I actually have some with me if you don't want to go online. Um, but it, it is a web survey as well. And uh, so we're encouraging as many people to fill it in as possible. So, and so if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. I know part of, um, part of our approach, we want to encourage this as, as a community-based effort. Um, we also have, have to look at the, you know, the needs of the school and uh, dovetail them. And I think this is what um, Keith has been thinking about. Uh, and I, I wonder if this, would this be a good time for you, Keith, to, to just sort of so I can talk a little bit about it. Um, David and I actually have had um, a discussion. And oh, sorry, just, just a moment, please. Excuse me. For the, in the boards, in the handout that you have in the very, very back of your packet, there's a memo from Keith and I that summarizes where the school district is with our fiber pursuits. Yes. So just so you have something to refer to. Excuse me for interrupting. Great. We got the memo. We <laughs> <laughs> just got it tonight. So, so certainly you can refer back to that, but I can also speak to it briefly. Um, so we are looking right now at uh, moving forward for next year, trying to um, do basically a wide area network configuration for our um, network services to provide internet to all the schools and connectivity between the schools. Uh, right now there is a significant disparity between some of the schools in terms of the bandwidth they have available. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the service that has been available in those communities up until recently. Um, but we are uh, going to basically go out to bid through the E-rate process sure how many of you are familiar with that. Um, it's basically federal funding. We get up to 60% um, of our services reimbursed through the E-rate program. Um, so this sort of dovetails into what David is talking about. And I've spoken to uh, both David and Jeremy Hansen, who is one of the founders of CV Fiber. Who lives in Berlin. I'm sorry? And lives in Berlin. And lives in Berlin. It's just yes. keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this could dovetail nicely into that. I think um, given the timeline that they're working on, like you said, we sort of need to look right now at what the schools need and what we need to do. Um, but I think sort of in the near future, these would be this would be a short term solution. And then, you know, if CV Fiber is successful and, you know, standing up service and, and can provide that, then I, I think we absolutely will have to look at partnering. Thank you very much. The, um, let me, the, uh, in terms of service uh, capacity around bandwidth, Worcester is one of the worst places in all of Vermont. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Middlesex isn't doing great. And um, so there's a lot of need here, and I think that's why the survey results of what they were is, is a reflection of that. Um, and I think it's important in, in terms of um, equitable access to have every household have access. So. Yes. That's great. Um, well, just in the case of my internet's been out all week, and my kid couldn't get on her computer to do her homework. Is it fair to say that we as a board are interested in, of course, developing what we can for the school um, on a timetable that suits the needs of, um, of our schools and students, with the longer range idea of um, of mainstreaming into CV Fiber when it comes online, is that? Well, I think saying we support CV Fiber's work yeah. and what they're doing yeah. in order to have more um, equitable access to internet is important, I would think. Yeah. And I can also say we're working with Washington Electric Co-op as well. So, 
much as the things coming together. So I have a question for you. Um, did you say that there is a significant difference amongst the schools in terms of band? In terms of what? And, and explain what the difference is. Is there any short-term solution to that that we can take now? Um, assuming disparity of access impacts educational opportunity. And if that's wrong, you can say that's not correct. Um, but if it is correct, is there anything we can do in the short term to improve that for the schools that don't have as good access? I think there's there's always something we could do. I think it would it would be a matter of cost, and I think the cost could be fairly significant to for not much gain is the unfortunate piece of that. Um, we did bump up all the schools from last year in terms of the bandwidth that's available. <coughs> um, so I am hopeful that that will mitigate some of that for this year. Um, certainly in the future, this is, this is a much more equitable and appropriate model to, to use to provide those services. Um, it's not something that I've looked into extensively, um, but just sort of knowing what the services cost and what is available out there right now, um, I would expect the cost is to do this. In, in what is it that's, that's not as accessible? What is it? That so it's basically a question of data. It's how much data can you push through that connection concurrently at the same time, right? So uh, if you had 20 kids streaming a video, could you support that? Or, or would you be using up so much of that connection that it would be pausing or not loading or things like that? And what is, what is the difference between the different schools that some don't have as much problem with that as others do? Are you asking why? Yeah. yeah, it has to do mostly with the infrastructure and where they're located. So, is it um, infrastructure in the school or outside of the school? Outside of the school. So, it's what are the services that are available? Who's reselling them? Who, you know, what do those services to the building cost? Um, the schools are fairly similar inside the building in terms mm -hmm. of the network infrastructure within the building. Um, so East Montpelier and Berlin are closer to sort of more central hubs. Um, and then the other schools, Calistoni and Rumney, are further out. And you'll find that you know residents in those communities also don't have as many options. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Calis resident, and I have very limited options. I have basically one carrier that I can get fairly limited bandwidth from where I live. So it's it's really a question of infrastructure out into the buildings themselves. Thank you. Okay. Um, the timekeeper is giving me the nod. Um, one question I had is whether it would be possible to encourage um, families through the newsletters, families and school children to fill out the, the survey sure. to see if that might bump. And can, yes, and I think that would be not be a problem for our principals to include on. I'll work with you to get the verbiage yep. and the link if you could provide that. I know it's on Front Porch Forum already, um, and I think Front Porch Forum, if it can be re entered periodically to bring people's attention, because yep. we only reach about 20% of the community because that's about the number of our citizens who have children in schools. So uh, using Front Porch Forum uh, more regularly is a really good way to get to all others individually. But certainly, you can do that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. <coughs> many, many thanks. Okay. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. Yeah. Did a. Um, Greg? Uh, hello, uh, I'm Grant Western with the Cross Vermont Trail Association, also with a infrastructure network topic. Uh, we, we've obviously 
uh, they, uh, to be, they work for years on the regional bike path network or multi-use non-motorized path network. Um, our specific project for many years now, which is on schedule to start construction next year, pending sufficient funding. We have uh, permitting now and uh, other, other things are in line, the engineering, which is to extend the Montpelier bike path, with, which you know just extended out to Gallison Hill Road. And then theoretically, starting next spring, we would continue that up to, up to the school, U32, and then down, uh, down back, the, back down the hill, a bridge over the Winooski River where the old uh, Montpelier Wells River Railroad crossed the river it would run out alongside the river parallel to Route 2 to just before Vermont Country Campers, cross Route 2 there, go up the hill to Route 14 near where the uh, Humane Society is. And then, and then that, and starting there, the old rail bed is, uh, still exists and is a public trail now. And so that's the idea, is to connect the Montpelier bike path across, up to U32 and uh, all the way across East Montpelier. So we would connect at least some neighborhoods in, in East Montpelier Village directly to the school. And I've met one family who lives on the trail route, whose child is like three now. And they told me by the time she's in seventh grade, we have to be done. So that's the <laughs> timeline. Um, we, again, like I say, we have our active 50 permit and all the other permits are just about done, uh, supposedly the next few days. Uh, we, we finished a very extensive VTRANS mandated design process, which is now concluded. Um, and um, because that took a while, the costs have gone up, especially the cost of steel because of tariffs and things. Um, and so we, we had a, a federal grant, which was received a number of years ago to pay for this trail up to the school, the bridge over the river, all this stuff. Um, and, and then we had to raise a local match for that, and all of the towns in the U32 school district in the last couple of years had voted to make a contribution to the local match, as well as many hundreds of local citizens made donations, things like that. Um, but because the costs have gone up, we need to apply for more federal funding, and the, the, the grant program that we're applying to is the Transportation Alternatives Grant Program, which is federal highway funding, um, the, it's due on Friday, so I'll be submitting it then. Um, and normally, uh, one of the requirements of the grant, the reason I'm here tonight, one of the requirements of the grant application is that, um, that 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 be announced to the community at a publicly advertised meeting. So I thought the school board would be a logical public meeting for that. Um, and um, also, uh, while, while, while I'm here, to, to ask if the school board could, and then I have to give them the minutes, which I know won't be available by Friday, but you know but they know that too. So once the minutes are available, I'll pass on the minutes to prove that we, we did the meeting. Um, and, um, and since they'll be reading the minutes, I thought that would, might be a chance if, if you're, if it is what, if, you know, something you'd be uh, able to do, would be to confirm the past action of the board to support the, the creation of this trail and you know, just uh, it's something obviously the school has donated a trail easement to us to allow the construction and so on. And so, uh, if that were on, in the minutes that you were confirming your support of the project and that you think it's good for the school, the folks reviewing the grant they'll have it right in front of their faces. So, yeah, um, it's um, coincidentally <laughs> the chair of the U32 board at the time that we took that action is sitting right next to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we did it twice, at, yeah, least, at least, yeah. over the last 10 or 12 years, yeah. Um, yeah. we did design, so that's really exciting. Great. Yeah, so um, just to, to get clear, uh, some kind of confirmation, yeah. a formal confirmation, like, as in a vote, is that? Yeah, just something that would show in the minutes. So. <clears throat> Yeah, um, this is sort of here we go, uh, acting on the fly. If you're, if the if board members are comfortable, uh, again reaffirming decisions that have been made by predecessor boards uh, um, in support of the Cross Vermont Trail system and it's running through U32. Um, Scott, I would just I, so the board knows what all we did. One of the things I think that's really important to note is that. 
our attorneys, their attorneys got together. I mean, this was uh, so the easement uh, rights because um, it's going to be an accessible path from the school down to the uh, to the river to where the trail is, and um, and so there was uh, there's a lot of back and forth, but our board did approve um, the easement and several other features that that are a part of the trail because um, it's going to be on our property for a very little distance on the 32 property. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, so it's a, but our property will also be an access point to the trail from our parking area, and so that's. Uh, with signage that directs people there as well. And so I think that just so you know what we're doing. So is the easement already granted? Yeah, all that's all that's in place that's from your previous board. Well, but it doesn't undo what it was done before. That's true. No. So this is reaffirmed. I'm happy to reaffirm yeah. that yeah. if yeah. we're taking any substantive action. No. Yeah, this, this is simple. Yeah. This new board yeah. supports yeah. what was decided at yeah. a previous board. Right. So, um, would you like to make a move? Have a, a move that we reaffirm um, the prior actions taken by the 32 board to provide an easement um, to uh, the bike trail. Okay. Cross Vermont Trail Project. Cross Vermont Trail Project, as corrected by Lindy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Yeah. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Great. Thank you. And the minutes will reflect this. Okay. <laughs> Do, should we put that in bold? <laughs> Big font. Thank you again. Okay. Well, Thanks you. very much. Uh, I guess we have, um, yeah, uh, nothing more on, on any of agenda item one, agenda category one. So then we move on to spotlight. I'm Casey. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for being here. We're excited to be hosting you here at Harmony. Um, we are going to be doing a tour tonight, but I will be watching my clock to make sure that we're timely with this. So we'll try to be brief. I'll make just a couple of quick statements in our classrooms um, and get us back here in a timely manner. But we're excited to have you here. Um, we're going to head back to the lobby, and we're going to start with our primary wing, and then we'll come back to our second intermediate secondary wing, and then we'll finish here in the Cafe Gym Tour. Follow me this morning, love All right then. So, uh, thank you very much, Casey. That was great. It was also a very nice to stretch our legs and have blood circulate and. And, uh, along with our own circulation through a um, beautiful school. Congratulations. Come back anytime. Oh, thanks. Um, so, 3.0 then, book reflection. Uh, I understand Alicia. Hi. Yes. Hi. Thank you for. We also have copies of the chapters for anyone who forgot their book. So I'll, I'll explain the protocol. I think Deborah sent it to you, but it was a while ago that we were slated to do this. We're going to do it tonight on chapters 4, 5, eight, and 6. But I also printed out hard copies of all of your notes that you took from your highlights and quotes from the book in case you want to use those for the protocol. We're going to get into small groups. And I'm going to ask if a, if a member of the leadership team can be the scribe. We're going to use chart paper, and we're going to scribe. We're going to go through four rounds in a small group. And I'll go over what those look like. Um, and I'll time you five minutes for each round. And I'll let you know when it's time to move on to the next round. Um, so the first round will be is called the four A's. Scott. Uh, Alicia, yeah. so sorry to It's drop. OK. I just wonder if we can maybe invite members of the public who are here to sit in on one or another of the groups as they yeah. choose. Oh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> um, this is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. So the 4 A's text protocol is a protocol we use a lot in schools when we're, when we're talking about a text. And I thought this might be a helpful one, especially because we're covering three pretty um, hefty chapters and in a pretty condensed conversation. So the first five minutes are just what assumptions do you think this author makes? Um, and, it, and you may want to pick some of your assumptions from your own 
quotes that you picked out, or you might want to just pick them out of the chapters. Um, what are some things that you agree with in, in these three chapters that the author has said? And again, you might want to use some of the quotes or, or write directly from the text. Um, the third five minutes, what, what in the, there do you want to argue with? What do you question or disagree with or want to argue with? Because, of course, we don't always agree with everything um, every author has to say. And then the final round um, are what parts of the text do you want to aspire to? And really, this is the conversation with the board. What do you want to aspire to or act upon as a board? Um, so I will go over just who is in each group, and then you're welcome to spread out anywhere if you want to stay at tables, if you want to stand and, and stick the chart paper to the walls. Um, entirely up to you. I think we have everyone, but... Um, I was looking for a whiteboard to write this down, and there was one in here, but you'll see up at the top your names. Um, so group one is Lori, Scott, Vera, Kelly, and Mia. And group two, Floor, George is not here. Um, so Floor, Aaron, Keith, and Joby. Over here, group three, Jonas, Jael, Jen, and Casey. And then group four is Chris, Lindy, Deborah, Stephen. And group five, Dorothy, Mary Lynn, Bill, and Kat. Oh, Bill is not here. Kat and Gillian. So if you want to get up and move around, find your chart paper there. It's for the scribes, there are markers and there's packets of the quotes. And find a place where you're comfortable. And in about two minutes, I will let you know when we'll be here. Um. Mia, would you mind holding this so I can write? Sorry. <laughs> One assumption is that it's possible. Yeah, that's you. Okay. No. I'll move over. Oh, no. No, that's all right. I'll just go get a cough drop. Community <laughs> engagement is key. key yeah, key. Key please. to success or just key? Just key. key to yeah. process. Uh, oh, to the process. That's good. Mm -hmm. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the work that we are trying to accomplish with our collection of information. Um, Did you find it? In, part of what I, I was reflecting on page 42, um, and I'll just kind of paraphrase. So, increasing the importance of becoming insured, our role because community stakeholders are expecting boards to know everything about district operations. Um, and then the mandate for training, um, which kind of goes back to what our training will be. So the assumption is that the board has the information, not only that we, that us, and so not only assuming that people make the same meeting from information, but that you get the information at the first Right, that you have it in the first place. So we have it, yeah, and then um, you can have dialect about it if we need clarification mm -hmm. and, and of, um, questions or... Um, things like that. So would this be the um, confidence finesse about operations? Yeah, I just, and, um, really just like it was talking about operations and also um, curriculum and Embedded in this also sounds like to me that you have to have, be making the assumption that we're doing things in the same way in all of the buildings. That's like a work in progress, Mia. We're just right. starting. The, the last time we did this, which I think was a couple of meetings ago, um, having been through a bunch of the buildings, right? There, it seems like lot of this is being done already. I think that we would benefit from the conversation we say we need to have around equity and have a common definition. And from that, I think we could sort of move forward, but I don't think we do not have that. Jump to agree. So if we finish assumptions now, what do you agree with in the tech, you know, so from the 
use the title or when modern just operation systems must be placed for the fourth of the one. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 What page is that? Forty six. Thanks for giving us a choice there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, <laughs> there's a lot of like. Yeah. What was the last one? Page 56? 46. 46. Where are you? He's good. Uh, <laughs> Lori. What's the challenge? Um, I, 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 first, I want to ask you, Mia, if there's anything so far that you would argue with that's up there. No, I think those all make sense. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, in that case. Okay. I guess we can yeah, just. Yeah, we're not in a rush. Yeah. We're, um, yeah, we're right on time. Yeah, we're accelerated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> chapter five, page fifty-three. Um, one thing I I would argue with. Um, when a collaborative relationship exists between management and labor, what I argue with is not the cooperative, collaborative relationship, but rather the categorization, management, labor. Um, I would much prefer, say, um, administration and faculty, mm -hmm. or something like that. There'll be change in board members, there'll be change in student representation on the board, there'll be change in administrators. How do you sustain um, uh, this system or any system? How do you constantly retrain new people or train new people and retrain, you know, so that it's an inclusive environment? And the thing I do argue with him is that he reaches these conclusions without necessarily explaining the how. Mm. Yeah. He says, this do a will lead to this. Okay, explain how that happens. And it's just, it's, it's not. There's a paragraph yeah. about how a district can only be high achieving when you have a courageous board and that the role of the board is not just about monitoring effectiveness, but uh, creating a system of collaboration from all levels of the system. Yeah. And I think that's something that I would aspire to. Yeah. Write her down. Mm -hmm. See, she has to work. Alicia, uh -huh. you're a very good timekeeper. Whenever you come over, I feel like you came over, cracked the whip, and you get right on. No, so, just, so we have five more minutes, things. right? We still you have, have five. Minutes. And then we'll debrief as a whole. Oh, debrief. Okay. This so is, this, this I'm going to take a quick back. Yeah, yeah we by don't have intermissions built into this. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, we need to have sort of bio breaks. Yeah. <laughs> At all levels. If you can head back to your seats, we'll do a whole group deeper. So we won't go through all of the groups, um, the four A's, but what I will do is I'll take the chart paper and I'll type these up and I'll share them out with everyone just so you can see what other groups talked about and um, you know some assumptions that they felt the author made or things that, that the groups talked about that they agreed with or maybe just didn't agree with. Um, but I was thinking we could just open it up to anyone, so not putting any any group or individual 
um, on the spot, but just thinking about what what is this your conversation? What does this mean for our work together? For your work as a board, um, and anything in, in relation to what you just all talked about in the conversations you had. Some stayed strictly to the protocol, and other conversations kind of veered off, but they were all really important conversations. So I just open it up to anyone. May I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, for me anyway, uh, our, our discussion built up to a climactic final chord of um, essentially the idea that what we aspire to is a system in which all stakeholders um, are able to work and study and learn and uh, within a culture that allows for um, a sense of a sense of security um, and enough enough personal safety to allow for a willingness to take risks and experiment and um, push boundaries and try new things. But this is um, this is the part that allows for some excitement. Thank you. Other thoughts? Well, I think what Scott says echoes what our group talked about, recognizing the importance of relationships and that the board is a new group the leadership team has new members on it, and so um, you know we're really not not there yet. We're really not even close, actually, because because there's so much newness. And we talked about this idea of, of, of generating like a plan. So how do we get from this state of newness and having this ideal of what we, we can be? What are the, then the concrete action steps that we can take? to go from here to there. Thank you. Other? I, I was just gonna do, do little things. So, so when, when, I, when we were doing this work, I was thinking that what is exciting for me is that we have the opportunity, we can take that lead role in establishing a school system as opposed to uh, as a system of schools. And, and we still kind of have a system of schools, so we, you know, it's really exciting through this process we could be more equitable and provide more opportunities our students, but create a system like we have right now, pre-K, or I guess we call pre-K to graduate, right? Mm -hmm. okay. To talk, so we have that, uh, if we put all this, uh, we have all the parts, I feel we just need to put this system in place to do that sort of bubble grant diagram. So I, I don't think, I don't feel like we're too far off, but uh, not, not far, we have a lot of work to do, but that uh, we have all the parts that we are able to agree in that says, you know, in the, in the benefits of organizing ourselves. Thank you. Any final thoughts? I think we, we, we landed on the importance of a shared definition of equity. Mm -hmm. And the need to do more of the work to get more community involvement Thank you everyone for participating, for getting up and moving around and taking this time. It was, I think it's helpful to capture it in writing, to be able to look back on. Um, we talk about a lot in these chapters and there's a lot in them and I think it's, it's helpful to go back and, and look at what these conversations were. So, thank you. And thank you, Alicia, for your time and discipline. <laughs> we much appreciate it. Yes. Speaking of which, um, we're hoping to, uh, we're shooting to end by nine, um, if we possibly can. So um, I would, with that um, advisory, welcome. I'll make a motion for three minutes. Thank you very much, Laura. Okay, let us Laura moves, Chris seconds. Approval of the minutes of November 6th, 2019. Um, any comments, corrections? <coughs> you look good to me. Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, ready for a vote? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed? Good. Minutes are approved. All right, now we have the board orders. I don't know where those are at the moment. Right here. Ah, great. We just need someone to make a motion with the uh, amounts. So we need to take our links. Um, yeah. Should we, do you want to? Uh, just so we're not voting at the yep. end. Sure. Okay. So, October 16th board minutes said that Deborah and Lori would be collecting information and the uh, it's <coughs> yeah, so yeah, so there was to the finance committee and that's where the, the longer discussion occurs. so I don't feel like we ever as a board came up with how do we I mean justify these amounts or determine that if all five towns were doing this, there's you know there's a pretty big discrepancy among them. Now the towns are different sizes, so I was a little uncomfortable because as I looked through the minutes, I saw nothing where we had decided on a system going forward, or for this election, there's never been anything like this in the past, and. So if you and I, I don't believe I have a copy with me, but online you would see our finance committee from the prior month. After the, after I have that one. Okay. So the finance committee had a conversation about what ought to be considered included within those bills, and we spoke about proposed a flat payment of five hundred for every single one. the finance committee minutes. I don't know if you have those. That's what I was reading. Oh, you were That's from right. October tenth. Okay. And maybe there was another one, yeah. but the ones I found were October tenth, and I think it says. Um, Dot had proposed a flat payment of 500 for every school election. And then there was discussion. Um, and no, they needed more information to make a, so it said that Lori had recommended the board solicit a corrected, and oh, that was for the previous invoice. And the full board will be that the district will pay for costs of additional elections of special elections. Special I thought elections. that was after. The individuals who are employed that are not, just for the election day or period. Uh, that's what that was that Kevin is referring to specifically. So you're correct, we did not bring that conversation back to the board until this evening and it, it had been thoroughly researched and I believe it was the recommendation of the finance committee that those, that the final bill, the revised bill be brought 
forward for discussion and possible approvals might that be correct. Yeah, and the, and the only reason they're on the on the board order too is because if it was approved, you know, we, we did a lot of research for so we did give guidance to to Lori who said go go back and find out exactly who were we knew that we needed to pay. So I mean we had almost no voters as far as percentage across the thing. I know we still have to be there, we have to have everything set up. I so just was surprised to see it on the board warrant warrant warrant. And when we, we felt like it was not up to us to question them and like you know, so we, we we said please provide a reason said but you know Lori reached out to everybody with the same exact letter and said please give us just the everyone that was not your regular staff that you had to employ for the election and any advertisement costs that you had. It, we didn't receive the specific, we received an amount from Berlin, but it was not like by we have the line dates. item. Yeah, yeah, the dates that I'm looking at um, were for events that occurred February 19th, April 8th, April 9th, May 21st, June 25th, um, and those are the key dates. And then there was an easement vote at Callis on April 23rd that a bill came in for that should have been received by the school district prior to us closing the Callis books. An easement? For the transfer of the property. And that's part of that's a, that's a bill that typically the school would have paid for. Um, for but that. that's not an election. True. Expense. But that was an outstanding bill that met the criteria that I was asked to, to solicit. It's a vote, though. For it's that not town. an election, but it's a vote because school property, you need to have the vote to transfer. So they the set property. up a whole election stuff, right? That's what I'm asking. I'm sorry? They set up a whole election for you that? Have in, yeah, it, it, it was a town meeting kind of, kind of arrangement, yeah. I'm still I'm uncomfortable because it has not been. So I guess what we could do is I, either. Well, it's, maybe it's just me, but. No, no, what, what we could do is like we, 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 can, we can give some guidance to our, there, there's some by statute that we have to pay, but also we can give some guidance to our policy committee saying maybe we need a policy that says that we would pay just for additional, for not regular staff in future elections. So moving forward. Yeah. Moving forward so that we have, uh, and we know that each town operates a little different, right? So Berlin doesn't get as many volunteers as some other, and I don't really know, I'm not a Berlin resident. Do that many? Well, it's a town's volunteers. responsibility to run elections. Correct. But it's, it's our responsibility. And it's all of our tax dollars. Well, the district is now a municipality, so we have a, a requirement to carry out school elections and cover a portion of those costs, which is essentially how this ended up at the school system's uh, doorstep. So, so it says we are, that's a good distinction, we are a municipality now. As of July 1? Yes. As of July 1. For all the towns. And these were both leading up to that decision. We did, uh, we did contact the Secretary of State and he concurred that these were, that these additional expenses uh, would be the responsibility of the school district because of that statute that references this. But, but as, of, as of July 1st. As of July 1st. Not going back in time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so it was really just this last vote, the November one. The same criteria as the Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. The, the bill is not just for the November one. This is from this is no, for the November We weren't a municipality Correct. Yes. until July 1, which Correct. we've only had one election. You were in transition. Since July. But we were in transition. Yeah. Correct. You were in transition. I, no, I think that until I was when we were mm -hmm. in transition. Right. Right. But Again, it's a, it's a fine distinction which you need to keep in mind. But I think, I think we, we have the ruling from the Secretary of State that. We're responsible. I think the expense is legit. Um, we can't force people to bill us if they, or, or if they. I'm not saying to force people. Yeah. I was questioning. They felt like expenses. they had it. They, they felt like they had their books closed and that it was their responsibility. So, but we can't. You know, every town. Oh, I wasn't like trying to add more to the bill. No, no, I, I, I no, no. I, when I saw the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, are we ready then to make a motion on the board orders? I, I don't think so. Why? Well, it appears I'm the only one that's concerned about this. 
Is your concern that we're paying the costs at all, or is your concern that we don't have a mechanism for justifying and sort of knowing what those costs are going to be moving forward, or both? A little of that, because we could be setting a precedent yeah. that, okay, I don't need to get volunteers because the school district's going to pay for me to hire a whole bunch of, I'm not saying any town's going to do that. Yep. I'm just saying that that could be um, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I, that's all I'm and saying. The, 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 the cost that we've, we've never been, done this in the past. The cost that we've been invoiced for from the three towns, four towns, are they along the lines of what Warren, Scott, or and Deborah are talking about, that they're just those additional costs? Right. Above right. Them? Okay. Anyone that billed us in, or more than that had to do a corrected bill. So that at one billed, point, some of the towns had billed us for more. So they that, billed us for regular staff. That, that original And that so we had talent. picked that back and yes. said yes. Okay. Yes. And at Berlin, they had had some too, but they pulled it back. So would, would it make sense to, I mean, these are not astronomical sums. No. But it makes sense to approve these and, and give and give that guidance, whether formally or informally, to the policy committee saying, break this down. Well, if we're a municipality now, there must be some rules that came with the statute. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it I is that every town operates differently, and, and I don't know what control you have of that, so I, I hear your concern. Then there should be the same some concern. sort of limits. But yeah. I think your policy can set the limits. But the policy, yes. Yeah. Wasn't that brought up? We did talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. times, the first meeting. Yeah. So we should prioritize mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And we can also, as part of the motion, um, just draft that this this um, warrant contains some. Um, This is Lisa's favorite part of the meeting. I'll second it. Sorting that out. Well, is there any other discussion or questions about the board orders? Otherwise, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> Thanks, Chris. And thank you, Lisa. All right. Um, unless you have further questions, Chris. Uh, all right. All in favor of the um, board orders as Chris moved them. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Good. All right. Um, 5.0 reports. 
Uh, I think what I'd like to do again is for superintendent just uh, questions. We have the written report, and um, and I have a feeling that some of this will be picked up when you talk about the VSBA conference. So um, any uh, any other any questions for Deborah on her report? Any questions for Mia? What program is rescheduled for tonight? Um, the Rolling Up Our Cities Community Dialogue. Um, it's a thing that's been happening once a month at Newbury, or it's a for the broad community, but it's been happening specifically in Newbury too. And it happens in the afternoon. There's a theme every night. I'm not sure what the theme was this time, but I know that. Is going to be there, and they talk about racial issues. Thanks very much, Mia. All right, 5.3, the SBA conference. <laughs> Who would you pick on your boat? <laughs> I, think, yeah, I think I can see faces. <laughs> so 
So that was a great conversation to have, and I think it's not easy, but a great conversation to have with the broader uh, community. And then the last thing uh, that also made me think about ourselves is that uh, she, she talked about a confluence where it's with the two rivers come together, and I don't know specifically where she, where she was, but it made me think of those with two rivers. I, uh, I think to myself, this is where we are. Two rivers that are slowly coming together. We honor where we were and how long it took us to get here. And I'm looking forward to having that moment when the two rivers come together, not just on paper. Because she talked about how when the two rivers come together, the river is colder and the other one is warmer. And if you swim in the middle, you feel, and that's kind of, even how we're sitting right now. <laughs> it's like how we're, um, and then the, we said we had a very interesting equalized people in the way, talking about the waiting study. <coughs> the only reason to mention that is that they're going to be looking for input from all school board members as uh, going, there's going to be a lot of discussion as the legislative session starts on uh, the school funding system. And schools will be expected to contribute in this discussion debate about the uh, impact of the, the, the waiting study is basically not uh, how, we, uh, how we're spending uh, the money but not to tell us how to spend it. So it's just, uh, that's something that is coming down our, our pipe. And the last thing uh, that was, it was some student data, privacy, the privacy, privacy, privacy data. And we you know, have kids here and they're right on, on top of that, but they're trying to come up with, the, hopefully as a country, with one privacy data. But right now there's a bill six, you know, S111 that they're trying to bring back up at the beginning of the year. And the last thing, we have a new executive director for the VSBA, and then Sue Siglowski came to one of our meetings. And thanks for having her. She used to be the, the, the council. And we said goodbye to Nicole and to yeah, a couple of other board members that stepped down. And last, we passed both of our resolutions. I did not get to vote because I, I, still, I was still part of the separate committee, but I didn't get to vote, but it passed unanimously. So we should be proud of that, too. Is there anything else that I have? Um, you covered almost everything I had on my list, but I'll just add a few more. Yeah. Uh, so I also attended a, a very an interesting workshop on community engagement, and I believe it was Milton School District, uh, where they were beginning the process of development of the plan. So talked about several ways that one could reach out to various stakeholders, including students. Things like having the students draw from an early age and, uh, and write comments about what their aspirations are for the future and, uh, and other uh, various activities that help them gain a sense of how their communities would like to see the school move in the future, what direction they see the school go. So since community engagement was part of our discussion this evening in Chapter 6, I thought it was worth highlighting that we're just really good opportunity. Uh, and also a performance that was, yes. yeah. Uh, uh, Laura mentioned the portrait of a graduate exercise, and the Austin schools of the month have already completed that, and one school brought a chorus uh, who had developed with their director a song which specifically explained their portrait of a graduate statement and their various elements of their vision, and it was really touching, excellent. Well done. I recorded it. We, yeah, we thought about playing it, but it's almost a shame. It's very long. long. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're hoping that they will travel around, but they, yeah, it, was, it was really very, it was moving and uh, certainly displayed uh, how high school students are very, are multi talented, as we know. Very, very interesting. I think that's the highlights that just came Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Sure. Any questions? Is Nathan using a consultant? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, five point four of superintendent search. Dorothy, would, would you like to? I've been appointed the chair of that committee, <laughs> <laughs> which means I say we are now in session, and then. We are now by consensus. <laughs> and mostly Mark, our consultant, kind of carries us along. But we made a decision to design a 
survey um, to find ways to engage various um, stakeholders of the community in, in the various parts of the search going along. It won't, my understanding is that we are not going to um, make a search committee that includes uh, the board of people and some people from the community and some teachers and some leadership. It will be pieces at a time that can come together and have the kind of community engagement around what that particular stakeholder is interested in. And those dates are will come out after probably a uh, meeting on next Monday. So next Monday. Um, the, the advertisement went in school spring last week. There was some responses already. It is scheduled to go into the Times Argus on a couple of the weekend papers. I don't remember the other places it was sort of important, but that's where it is. <coughs> getting together um, a fairly small, short, straightforward survey. Could you, could you remind the board uh, who is actually on this committee now? The oh, that's committee? right. I don't know if I have. We have um, uh, Stephen and Lori and um, Kate McKenna, is it? McKenna. And Chris. Chrissy George. Is it Chrissy George. Chrissy George are part of this committee now, and I guess were we set to kind of have the board accept them? And I don't remember, honestly, if they are voting members or just the Can I, can I just clarify? Go ahead, so, yes. So, just um, clarify. So, I, there, there's some confusion. So, this is just a steering committee of the superintendent search. This is not the interview committee. So, this Oh, the interview committee, yes, will be so very the, different. So the interview committee, the, being in this committee doesn't guarantee that you're going to be in the interview committee. The interview committee would be made out of community members, administration, principals of the elementary schools, students. Because all those people were U32 except for that you listed. Right? Yeah, exactly. There's, there's no, in this steering committee, there's not a representation. There are things that we're meeting on a very non- great time for them to meet, right? We're meeting every Monday at 8 o'clock right now. But all this committee is doing is really just steering the process, making sure that we're reaching to all the And we actually approach holders. the association. Both of those people are uh, co-presidents of their association. Um, they're not just random teachers. We, no, no. we just approach them as the representatives of the oh, association. Yeah. Chrissy, Chrissy represents the... Yeah, she's the co-president of the ESP yeah. Association yeah. and Kate is the co-president of the teachers. And there are elementary staff who are co-presidents also for teachers and support staff. But we don't have any of the elementary people in not this yet. steering committee yet. Right. So, But I wanted to be clear that this committee is not doing the interviews. Right? This is just the steering committee. The <laughs> interview committee will do the interviews and pass their candidates to yes. the board. And our standards for membership on the interview committees are a lot higher. And how long is the ad running? I saw it was on for so January 10th. Okay. And, and um, the, the board component of this committee, you've already voted on. I, I, Dorothy is mentioning this, at least from my perspective, as chair of, of the board, just to make sure that there's no objection to our including Lori and Stephen and Kate and Chrissy on uh, what Flo refers to as the, the steering committee. And we normally have a steering committee? Approval to include those folks from the board. Is what I, 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 was, um, I was hoping to, to finesse it with just no objection. But if you, if you feel like we ought to have a that's approval. Fine. That's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. But, it, but it, it's just a recognition by the board that these other individuals are going to be helping. Yes. As, as, a, as more or less an official member. Yes, exactly. Of uh, uh, that steering committee. And the other clarification would be that, Stephen, as we left that meeting, you are communicating with the elementary principals, right? Yes, as of this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask a question? Yes. Um, I'm just curious why the decision was made not
not to have any representation from any of the elementary schools on the steering committee? There was no decision, and this just the steering committee just started to grow, but there was no particular decision. So we are at the moment that if the elementary schools wanted to have, if there's no reason why you guys could, as speaking for myself. I would say that when I approached both of the associations, it was with the understanding that they would be communicating with their membership. So I. Yes, we believe in inclusion. Yes. So, what is the, I guess, the steering committee's goal? I don't. I. It sounds something like something new to me. So I'm just curious. But it, it's, um, it, it's basically the the mechanics of the search. So the interviewing committee will actually be doing the screening and the evaluation of the applicants. Of the applicants. Yeah. So was this committee put together to make the ad? Yeah, um, among other things, to arrange the community engagement, to... Oh, sorry. Um, yes, that's what I was going to say. I think that we're, we're, we're trying to make sure we touch all the bases and get people involved in as least complicated a way as we can, given the fact that we're approaching Thanksgiving and the Christmas holiday. People don't want to go out to extra work because they have to go into all the school things for the holiday as well. So um, we're just sort of making sure that we touch base with all the things that need to be done. And then once we have this list of candidates, I, during one of these meetings, we will decide how to populate the interviews. So it's kind of nuts and bolts in order to get ready for the committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is the interview committee a, is the interview committee a completely separate group of people? There some of those members. Yeah, I expect there will be overlap. Um, then does that interview committee make a, a recommendation to this report? Yeah. Or yeah. So we're the, the committee that does that, or it goes from the interview committee to the screening to the. Okay. No. Yeah. We're the deciders. <laughs> no, I meant in terms of both okay, committees. With everybody's <laughs> input, no. In terms of both committees, who's doing the recommending, I guess is. The interview committee yeah. would be recommending the candidates. Yeah. Because yeah. then this other committee might be not be existing, will it? No, no. It started with you guys sending us, you know, the four of us, right. to, to this, this spear the process. And then Lori and uh, and Stephen came to our meeting, and then as we started to talk to Mark Andrews, he was like, well, maybe we need, what do you call them, proxies? Ex-officio. Ex-officio, that's it. <laughs> we need some more ex officio but I am I am completely happy. I totally hear your point of view, too, Alicia. So if there's somebody from the elementary school uh, that would want to participate, Right now, we should. I don't. I don't want to speak for anyone else, and I'm not saying I want to do it. This is just new information to the elementary principals right now. Yeah. If we didn't know who was on the committee or how it got decided or when you met. So you know, I I feel like it's a little bit on the spot for any of us to say we sh we want to do it, or I don't even know if anyone is interested. I just was curious why that was the decision, and it's a little bit concerning that there isn't anyone representing any of the five schools, but I, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak up for anyone. Maybe there is somebody who wants to do it here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, well, since I have three kids at this elementary school, I'll put in a plug for having someone from one of the elementary schools on that committee. Um, and then I had a question, which is, um, what is the term of the contract when you select a superintendent, would it be another five-year contract as historically has okay. happened, or is there an option to do a shorter term? Yeah. Right yeah. What's that? We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, can I make a comment about the elementary school teachers? That if you guys want to get your heads together, choose somebody to be there at 8 o'clock Monday morning, we will welcome you. We'll do it out privately and then someone will show up, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So any of the principals or any, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. If two come, that would be too fine too. <laughs> and if there was any offense taken, none was intended. No, no. Okay, just, yeah. 
Okay. This is just, it's, I think it's just our first time hearing it, so we, we haven't had a chance to, I don't know that anyone's interested, but that's just how I feel, is that it would be helpful to have a representative. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm, I, I feel sort of good that you're actually learning something new from one of these meetings. Can I ask just one more question? What is there a timeline for this committee, or, or what are the, just because we don't know the steps after? So we, we're you're meeting on Monday, but it, are there a series of meetings, or is it? So let's, let's identify the, the additional tasks that we will form before the interview committee takes over. Um, and I think it's going to be preparing questions. Uh, we'll eventually select the interview committee um, and give them the, their charge. Um, and arrange public, public engagement um, to get input from community members and different stakeholders on what they'd like to see. We, we prepared four different questions, five questions, I guess, um, for um, going out to form and conducting a survey just to get input back from the community and different stakeholders. Um, and I think that, that will end up being the end of the task for this steering committee um, in terms of an active role uh, until the interviews under the course. Yeah. And the interviews would be in January, the middle of January. Okay. And I think January 17 is a, yeah. is a date. 16, 16 and 17, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of a target. Um, and so two other things, or one other thing that this board has to go after this time is how many candidates to forward to us for coming out of the interview process. Yes. Um, and so we have, I think we have to address that. Um, and then we have to also address what type of term we may be willing to offer to the game. I don't know if um, that usually comes up during the negotiation, but in terms of how many candidates to forward to, to this board for its consideration, we we have as a board need to make that decision to give that to the interview committee folks who are going to be going through the application. Yes, good point. Okay. Which we don't have to do tonight. I don't know. Yeah. But we have to. But we do. But it is. Yeah. The future agenda items. Sure. Yeah. Um, and one last thing that I would mention is that <laughs> some of the community engagement that we are trying to do, we reached out to to Deborah Wolf from Friends of uh, Friends of Washington Central. To, to help us with that so that we start creating uh, a system with, with them and they're gonna help us put together the form. So it's not all gonna be led by by us. Nice. And Mark Andrews is still you know sort of the head of the not sort of the leading the search. I hope that's reassuring. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound no no no, 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 no. Sure. no. glad you did. Yeah. yeah. All right, are we good on this? Yep. Can you tell me the, should I put the names of the people in here again? Because I put all the steering committee members, or should I not bother? Uh, I have some of them, but I was um, Sorry, is that, uh, sure, we can, what? Uh, names of, um, so besides the four of us. Do we have those names? The board um, members? There's Dorothy. Yep, I have Dorothy, Floor, Stephen Delacroix, Pate, and Lori Bebo. That's what I have right now. So, Casey George. George and Kate McCann. And, uh, and I I I I I I Yeah. 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 Uh, and we should try to be brisk to the extent that we can. Yeah, um, this is the first, the first um, sort of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understood. You were hoping for thirty minutes. Can we shoot for twenty and see what happens? We, we okay, it's up to you. It's up Let's shoot for 20 then. Um, and we have. Okay. All right. Um, finance. What do we need to do? So we were going to start. So we had a finance committee meeting. And uh, we have a minute 
No, those are people that we do not employ. They're separate okay. and not included. And in, or if they're, they may be district-wide employees who are not included in Vision Quest School. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, um, and then the next page on page twelve, you will see a uh, document called the change summary. And if any of you have a strong recollection of our last annual report. I'm sure many of you have memorized it, right? <laughs> so I'm sure you have. This is a chart that we have used in the past, uh, both individually by school and, and certainly this past year as a new district. So the purpose of this page is to highlight the change areas which were appropriate in the level of service budget. In a moment, I'll ask Lori to review those with, in more detail with you. And then the next page, beginning on 13 and through 16, through 15, uh, is the budget summary, which again, those of you who have memorized our report from last year will recognize this format and it's very similar. And as Flora had mentioned, uh, we wanted to try to provide our community with a way to access this information uh, and hopefully find, find meaning and value. The very last page in our packet is uh, which will be the focus of our next meeting on December 4th, is information about our capital funds uh, as of November 14th. Uh, so that includes the balances as of July 1 and the expenditures uh, for 1920, and then um, also how, how we stand with our combined totals. And what the Finance Committee has done in their last meeting was also have a time to briefly overview some of the capital investment external um, plans that have been presented to them by uh, Black River Design, uh, John Hamelgarn, and Bill Ford, who is the clerk of the works, has worked with our schools for many, many years, uh, because it was the initiation of a effort to try to help the board become familiar with the immediate needs for the school system, how we might devote our existing funds, and then uh, the next stage will be a longer-term capital project to review, which will be presented so that's an overview of our materials, but if you're ready, I'd like to turn it over to you and talk about the <coughs> procedures. Yeah, um, okay. sounds great. Unless there are any questions on my Deborah. I have one question on the page 10, the numbers of students. I wasn't sure on the exchange choice, tuition, waiver, homeless, how the total column, there's nothing over here on the left, and then there's totals of numbers, and I just was curious what the, what that is or how that is. Sure. So we have exchange and choice at the high school. Uh, tuition is primarily at the high school. I don't know if we have any elementary tuitions off the top of my head. Um, no. We would with excellence. Would it be six, but it's not. Not, not as significant as So, uh, and then the last column is the tuition waiver or homeless students. So these are really secondary. They're not broken out, uh, you know, for the purpose of so where it says confidentiality. We yeah. wouldn't identify what town. 22 for exchange choice. Correct. Tuition is 68. That's right. And then so those would all be high school. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Seven from from, the from the towns town. outside of our five. Okay. Which is why they're not listed under the enrollment. Yeah. Okay. Well, the last column just says total. Right. It doesn't say anything about U32. No, so I wasn't understanding. No. Okay. <laughs> These are the numbers. So what, what it is is when you look at the totals there, the seventh through twelfth. Right. Uh, from each town, those are our kids at U32. Okay. So we would, and again, we wouldn't want to identify anyone personally. But the in some school districts, there is elementary tuition. We don't happen to have that here. So, but that's an option if someone were to desire to attend our schools and not be ours. Right. Okay. All set? All set. You okay, ready? Right. Okay. So um, one of the things I wanted to let you know is when you look over at the columns, you'll see that the words adjusted budget 2020 at the top. Do you see that? Which page are you on? I'm on page 12. 12. Okay. Okay. Um, so I wanted to explain what that meant. Um, what that meant was back when we were a supervisory union, we had supervisory union employees paid through an assessment. So when we had talked at um, budget presentations in June, I remember Scott saying, well, we don't have that high a percentage of payroll. 
and, and then we had talked about how it was in the contracted service through the supervisory union. So what I've had to do as we became a single district is to restate the salary and benefit total to reflect all employees, including the supervisory union. So you'll see uh, basically our salary and benefit total is about 68% of our total budget, which I think in the presentations it was around 50%. So um, having said that, that the adjusted budget column on that left side does reflect the voter approved budget um, from June which was the sum of all of the voter approved budgets separately and together. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Um, we will have a budget training at another date that um, we can go back through this sheet again. So if I move along too fast, um, just remember that you'll have a second chance to, to go through that training. So at the top of the sheet, it shares salary and benefit information. So for all of those employees that you saw on that page that Deborah referred to where we had the FPEs by school, the sum of all of those employees' salaries um, and benefits are in this draft. And what this first line reflects is a salary estimate for all staff. Um, it represents a 2.25% budget increase compared to last year's budget. And there are benefits related to salary estimates like Social Security and FICA tax that represents a 2.2%, excuse me, a 0.22% um, increase in the budget. Health insurance is um, expected to go up 12.9%. So if you consider all of our employees in their current health insurance elections, and I factored in that 12.9% increase, it reflects a, about a little over 1% budget increase. And the miscellaneous benefit changes are other benefits related to um, changing health insurance and salaries. So all in all, we've always called it um, a negotiated item uh, subtotal, but it's kind of just for, for future use for all employees, whether they're in the union or not. Um, it's a 3.49% increase in this draft of new money, so to speak. And does that take into account um, like some sort of assumed negotiation new contract money or yes. is that okay after that um, one of the things you need to know is um, that this fiscal year the board has approved a variety of positions um, beyond last year's voter approved budget um, particularly in um, special education for care educators um, and I think at <coughs> the various meetings you may recall that there was a number of positions that the board had approved um, in summarizing them, um, it's a $160,000 budget increase for next year, um, or a 0.47% increase. So all totaled um, for salary and benefits, the budget is in this draft a $1.3 million increase, or 3.97%. Am I going too slow or too fast? Or just yeah, right? right. Okay. So going down to the next category, these are items that are not staffing related. These are items that um, are either contractual in nature or what we have currently for level service. So I will take it just a second and kind of review each item. Um, as you know, um, we will only have one audit report instead of seven. So there are auditor savings due to the merger of $12,985. And a negative means the budget would be going down, just saying. Um, the Board of Education, VSBA dues and other changes in that budget, um, $8,000 of this savings is assuming that the board does not continue to have dues paid to VSBA in the next budget cycle and that you continue to not be members. That is something that's up for discussion, but in a level service budget, anything that's happening this year is what's in this draft happening next year. Interest expense, you've, I think, heard me speak about this at a, future, at a prior meeting. Um, we are borrowing less money as a single district, so we will spend less on interest expense. We will also have less interest income, which is at a future line down below. Um, and in fiscal software, the state has um, purchased software for all the schools in the state. There's an implementation plan, and the plan is that um, Washington Central Unified Union would 
participate in that software in the fiscal year 2021-22. Um, we previously had been budgeting $100,000 a year to save money for software and for staffing needed to convert to a new financial system. So we currently have 300,000 in the bank and the level of service would mean that that would sunset as the executive committee had expected it to back when we had done our prior budgets. So that's $100,000 savings. There's a number of items added together uh, for school-wide expenses for pre-K student services for book supplies and equipment that are causing an increase to this draft of $152,940. Have you asked that? It's actually um, using prior history and actually student needs today. Our food service staff um, would also incur salary increases and benefit increases um, but because it's a separate fund, it's here under non-salary items because the salary is actually in the food service budget, which is not part of this budget. Only the support to um, help the, the program break even is in this budget. Our bus contract is um, in year four, next fiscal year of a five-year contract. And this is the amount of the inflation, $43,535, um, that by maintaining the same contract, um, it had a, an inflator in there. I think it was around 3% of a budget increase compared to the current year. We have students who tuition to the um, tech centers. The primary um, ones go to the Spalding uh, Tech Center, which is called Central Vermont, Central Vermont. Central Vermont. Vermont. Career Center. So last year they had inflated um, their tuition by 10.6% from um, the participation. So obviously they're going to have salary and benefit increases. So I tried to use that same inflation factor. Um, we'll know more when they keep in the budget process and keep updating their numbers, whether this 10.6% inflation is sufficient to cover um, the cost for our students to go there. That represented a $50,926 budget increase. And then the last item is a co-mingling of students' um, needs for tuition and for contracted services for special education programs. And it's a budget increase of $210,204. And we do receive a significant amount of reimbursement to help offset that cost. So I'll talk about revenues in just a minute. Any questions on non-salary before I move down to debt service? Okay, under debt service, um, we have a schedule of bond payments and the happy day is that U32's $9 million bond is having a final payment this year. So the large reduction here is that the U32 bond is paid off, one of them. The $3 million bond will be paid off in I think within the next year and a half. So just wanted to celebrate that. So it is a $460,000 budget reduction. And our capital fund transfer for this purpose, we left it level funded in the absence of information. Um, Deborah mentioned um, that at the December meeting, we will come back and discuss more information about capital fund needs. Um, but at this time, the transfer for all the buildings together in this draft is $636,522. So having said that, the combined total budget increase is 1.2 million, um, you can read all the, the rest, or 3.6%. And of that, um, there are some offsetting revenues I'd like to make you aware of. Um, so what we've done is listed those below. Um, we are projected to continue, um, and I can't say enough good things about Lisa LaPlante going out and promoting U32, um, but we do have a significant amount of students, as you can see, we have 68 students. Um, coming through our doors from other towns. Uh, because some of those students attend the tech center, we can only build for 53 students. So this represents an increase um, of tuition revenue and a 2% inflation that we will increase our tuition by. So it's a $95,000 revenue source. Just real quick, those students who are paying tuition, 
Are there towns paying the tuition or, okay. True, we have a few private, Okay. Um, but the primary um, source is from towns. That, I mean, can, can, off the top of your head, how many are private? Just one. Out of Just one. one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the most we've ever had probably are two or three private because it is expensive. Thank you. Um, all right, you heard me speak about the interest income going down with the interest expense. And we've had some miscellaneous income for uh, reduction for billing that we can't bill ourselves anymore because we have a direct payment system. So for instance, if a U32 staff member works at one of our schools, instead of that coming through the system as income, it's a direct bill to the school for the staff time. And special ed reimbursement, you can see the projection uh, for the reimbursement is currently an increase of 253,000 to help offset that $210,000 expense line up above, and to also help offset the cost of the staffing changes this year where we added paraeducators. Um, at our next meeting, we will have more information about um, our projections for revenue. Um, and then the last item was, uh, one of our schools did earmark a fund balance for retirement that has now gone away, so we wouldn't be including that as a revenue stream in this budget. So all total, the big number uh, for the net impact on taxes is $937,505 uh, or 2.77% increase. Thank you very much, Lori. Uh, the last <laughs> comment I had is for the next draft, um, the state has not released any information yet to run current year tax calculations. Um, we could use the old information, but it's usually way off. Um, December 15th, um, we will have a lot more information about revenues. Um, we should be able to run the tax information, and um, I guess that's my presentation. Thank you. Do you maintain um, back of the envelope tallies of equalized pupils for your or estimates mm -hmm. for your purposes? So what we do is the sheet that you see on the page, um, head, um, page 10, that information plus um, the equalized pupil formula is what we currently have. Um, I do run my own calculation to double check, especially um, because we don't want any students to come out missing. Yeah. Because it's expensive if you lose that revenue. So we do have a calculation that I, I created in this file that links. That's great. Do you have enough confidence in those to share them with us to kind of give us a preview, at least a kind of ballpark sense of which direction in taxes might be going in December? Right, one of the dilemmas we're faced with is that when we have students attend other schools, if the school hasn't reported the student um, to the state yet, then our numbers count the student, but we really don't have credit for it. So where Michelle is right now is she's contacting those towns that haven't submitted their information in a timely manner and asking them, just vote our kids. <laughs> because otherwise we lose the revenue. Right. So they have until December 1st, I think, to pull it all together. So a number of our other towns um, need to finish their information. For those towns in the district or the towns? Oh that no, it would be like to. Montpelier, for instance. Thank you very much. Um, I guess my own my own take at this point. Uh, I think for those of you who are um, not familiar with the budgets, uh, this is just sort of a cruise control budget. Um, there is no strategy, no sort of look at um, how we might modify for equity or in, in do new programs or, or change anything. Um, and we're basically lucky this year in that the U32 bond is maturing. Um, otherwise, the, the base increase is pretty close to 5% without our doing anything new at all. So um, once again, it's like crunch, um, but but we're lucky, and we should be glad we're lucky, and um, make the best of it. And I guess uh, Deborah, when you mentioned the changes that you're looking at, um, sort of the strategic changes, when might we be able to? Well, our budget timeline calls for us to bring a draft, a second draft, back to the board. Um, <coughs> which follows the 15th, when we'll have our revenue information, we'll be able to provide much more detail about you know, potential tax rate as well. Um, at this time, our, uh, we have been working
working hard on uh, refining the list with our administrative team, and we will be sharing that, that refined list with the finance committee and then incorporating uh, or bringing the scenarios, the possible scenarios to the board with our recommendation uh, at the meeting on the 18th. If you recall, um, on the report, as I mentioned before, we have a significant conversation now around So we hope that that will be our focus for the next meeting. However, mm -hmm. there is a budget 101 training meeting scheduled. We probably received notes about that. We, I think we heard from six or seven board members. So if you haven't yet answered that poll, let us know. It looks right now like the third December is third. likely third. going to be the evening, and that would be about an hour. And we can delve into this document in more detail, as well as helping you read board orders, I believe, and a few other items that the board has this is especially important if you've not been involved in a budget development process before. And I know we have three or four board members who are relevant to you, so I strongly recommend that you join us for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and Lori, thanks so much for these percentages. I, I really <laughs> appreciate that. Very helpful. And it's a new item. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, just a quick process question. So for the suggested changes that get brought to that next meeting, Who's developing those? Is it the principals that are developing them, or the superintendent, or the finance committee, or some combination? Um, there is a combination. I would say that beginning in the summer, there have been some suggestions of uh, ideas or programs that have come from several different constituencies. Uh, right now, our leadership team is tasked with uh, prioritizing and bringing recommendations forward. And Board's ultimate responsibility to make determinations about which of those uh, may be added or exchanged for other uh, resource expenditures that we have. So and there will be communication to the community, like if there are any changes to programming, I think. And, and then we're having forums too. Okay. Yeah, coming up. Yes. So that reminds me, we do have a forum scheduled for December 4th, but we have not yet advertised it. Uh, I'm wanting to be sure that the board ready to um, ready and willing to prepare and present information uh, that is scheduled to be just before this next board meeting, an hour prior, and that will be at E32. So if, do you feel that that would be an appropriate time to share? We can share information about the level service budget and look for feedback. Uh, would be lovely if you think that time if you would like. Great. Okay. Yes. Prior to the next record for the next board. Yeah. Um, when do we first see any recommendations for potential um, equity changes? That would be at the next draft. This was on so December 18th. So our, our, if you recall, our budget timeline had set it up to have a level service budget now and the second draft on December 18th. So we're using that. We're following that time like the board approved back in the summer. When do we have to have a final approved budget? January 15th, middle of January. January 15th. 15th. Okay. So basically we'll have the presentation on the 18th and then not another meeting until early January as this So we won't have one of the holidays. And can we get at least a piece of preliminary idea as to what ideas are being traded uh, uh, um, or, or floated? in terms of some um, potential changes just because it's, we, we're already on a pretty short timeline and just have no indication for the 18th, I think, puts us in a, in a board as a whole and in the community, because um, I don't know if we'll have another form for the community that we in on potential changes. Well, it's, that's yeah, still not until still that's still after. after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll get the changes after, so is there any way to um, highlight what um, consideration, what ideas are under consideration? Prior to that. We're not ready to see. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not saying to see, but but before, before the final public forum. Before the 18th. Before the 18th. Yeah. We can we'll do our best fourth. for the 4th. Yeah. We can bring some information forward. Yeah. But I'm not trying to be sure that our administration has an opportunity to thoroughly mm -hmm. discuss and consider all of the various ideas. 
I mean, trying to be sensitive to the need to, that's, you know, that is the group who the board had tasked mm -hmm. with providing, uh, bringing a consensus recommendation. So we're working, we were working with the 18th timeline. I don't know if we can, because of the holiday, try to meet more than once. We're meeting on Monday this coming week. I, I just hate to rush that no, conversation. I think, but I know that I think, I think it's more than just more. I think the community needs to hear. Yeah. Um, just again, because this is the first year we have a unitary budget, and right. you know, in theory, it could impact. We'll do our best. Okay. And hear what hear what we're thinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. To be able to influence it, because yeah. I know that's a big part of what mm -hmm. people want to be able to do is have some say. Right. It's, it's key, and the feedback is very mm -hmm. important. We don't want to shortchange. What if we use the fourth and sixth for part of this Because we need we to have a superintendent meeting, a community meeting. So if we use the fourth, because we're running out of dates, so if we use the fourth and then, because we already had to reserve the 11th before the budget, the discussion the board had made previously, they approved the fourth and the 11th. And the 11th as and budget then, forms. Yeah. And then you, if you use the 11th for budget form, use the fourth for other question, the other uh, asset date, the superintendent forum. Mm -hmm. And so, because that's a, it's a good way to engage the community first, yes. and then use the, and then use the level, for, and that would give more time for, for you guys to to put back and forth those ideas that are floating right now. Yeah. And then in the 11th, we could present the ideas even if we don't have the budget amounts quite yet, right? You're saying from the leadership team? Yes. Would that make so then we're not trying to push for the fourth because we need a date for the superintendent, right? Yeah. We were up until tonight, we were working on the 18th as the date to present, so we'll have to pull back and make adjustments so to, to get, the, to get <coughs> the new information together. Yeah, and I don't think we need to have the forums, that's fine. Yeah, we don't need to have everything for the 11th, and the 11th could be more of a conversation, and on right. the 18th, we present that that budget, but use the fourth to engage the community because the questions that we have for the community kind of set the, the tone for the budget conversation. Right, well, I, I think we can talk about this yes. at the after meeting. Mm -hmm. But I know, but, but because we're all here together, then we're right. not surprised the fourth that without seems too soon meeting. as far as for the budget. Yeah. yeah. Other meetings scheduled until the 15th of January, which is when you said it has to be finalized. Mm -hmm. We don't have a meeting in between? Because of New Year's, of Christmas, month. and... Oh, January. I think we... January 15th is the only one I have on my... Yeah. We talked about the 8th as a possible additional meeting, but it's not been set by the board yeah. in January. We'll, we'll sort it out. We'll, we, didn't, yeah. we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't make that final decision, but it, well, that, that was... I mean, we usually do have to add some budget I mean, yeah. but I just, I see we get something on the 18th of December and then we say, yes, that's fine on the 15th of January and there's nothing in between yeah. is a little no, not comfortable. Yeah. Right. So the 8th would be, you know, I might suggest you, this you year, save it, save the air before making a motion to add that to your calendar tonight so that it's on mm -hmm. schedule for everyone. With the January 8th? Yes. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion because I'm concerned about it. I'll okay. second. Uh, Lindy and Marilyn, moving to add January 8th to the board calendar, mm -hmm. 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Do you want to dedicate to budget? Yeah. Dedicated to budget. And I think it should be at U32 because the one on the 15th is at Callis. Yep. Yep. Sure. Do you have a show of hands how many people think they can make it just so we have a rough idea that we'll have a quorum? Yeah. Would January 8th make it? It's a Wednesday. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Great. We're on for January 8th. Um, Kyle. Uh, just a quick for prioritizing what needs to get out to the community is just if there are any proposed cuts, any existing programs, that's what parents like me want to know about as soon as possible. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. So uh, what about this, uh, this level, the net impact on taxes? of 2.77%.
Does that seem defensible to you? I think that. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I think we should really not talk about it yet because I don't think it's going to stay at the point yeah. that we're going to do other things. So I think it would be giving a false. And aren't we getting insurance information in December as well? Well, I don't know if we have any guys reserve that information that they usually that. give us. Yeah. 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 But we do have that into the level of service budget, the 12.9% increase mm -hmm. in health insurance. Uh, in in the last um, three years, the number that they gave us was the final number. So but I thought there was talk of it not being the high or some other insurance. Oh, okay. or you're talking about the state negotiations. Oh, you're talking about yeah. negotiations, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I think yeah. that'll be a question mark for negotiations, not for the budget. So I think we have sufficient funds for what we know today. Okay. <clears throat> and Great. December 15th is the timeline for the state. That's what I thought. So that will be timely also. Mm -hmm. Lori, do you have a sense? So obviously this is the first, this is the second time we've done a whole district budget. Last time was just adding the pieces together. If you added those pieces together in previous years, do you have a sense of what the year-over-year -year percentage increase would be? Is, is this in the ballpark? It, it is. Okay. It's similar to what we've been running as a combined. Thank you. So at this point, what I'm, what I'm sensing is that we don't want to give Deborah and Lori any kind of sort of guideline as to ceiling on what we're prepared to accept as uh, net impact on taxes? Correct. Okay. That is more about not cutting the instructional pie. Yeah. At this point. At this point. Okay. I have one more item from the finance committee. Please. Uh, we, dis we discussed that uh, in a prior meeting the board had provided or had authorized the finance committee to approve bids for a specific tractor project, but they were wondering if you would be willing to authorize them to address all bids and take action on them. So that, because we do have some coming up uh, that we'll be looking at in December, and uh, it's an opportunity for that smaller group to really look into the issue in depth and make a decision. If you'd be willing, that was the Finance Committee's request that the board consider being authorized to um, review additional bids beyond that or perhaps all of them. What yeah. Yeah. You can set that magnitude if you wish. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you have coming up? Yeah, what's the scale of what you anticipate? I don't know the numbers. It's vehicles. They're vehicles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you yeah. might want to say it by topic area for right now or whatever. That's true. Helicopter? <laughs> no, I say like <laughs> private air versus a construction project, right? For, for <laughs> right. 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 Actually, I have all of my wisdom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the, students, it's the students I worry about. Okay. Not I would have no problem uh, authorizing the finance committee to do something with something that was something so commodified as vehicles. Yeah. Do we run a motion for that? I think we should. Um, I have a move that we authorize finance committee to. I would authorize I would move that we authorize finance committee to review and accept it um, on vehicles that come before them. Second. Chris moves, Jonas seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Not opposed, good. Uh, any further finance yes. committee stuff? Yes. Lori, that's good? No, we're good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. All right, policy. Uh, so we had two policy meetings on snow days that were canceled. So we are we just scheduling for next week. Um, so we didn't have a policy committee meeting. Um, but we are um, um, requesting the table uh, the policy that we have for, for reading here um, because we were the uh, second meeting, uh, not the board member, the uh, comprehensive sexual health program. Move that we table that because we were presented with a, um, a modification of the policy that we had been working with, and we want to take that up at our second, uh, at our next meeting. Um, and, and in terms of the, uh, I, I don't, we didn't do any further work on the board member conflict of interest. It's here for second meeting. Okay. And the library. And the library. And the library. And the library. And the same, same for the library. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion for a second reading of those two policies. 
I'll make a motion. So Fleur moves to a, uh, approve second reading of A1, board member conflict of interest, and D34, library media center selection and reconsideration policies. Second. Dorothy seconds. Uh, so we moved and Dorothy seconded. Any uh, discussion, Chris? Any, Any questions on this? Okay. Uh, in that case, if you're ready to vote, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed? Good. All right. Now, um, and, and uh, C50 is tabled. Yes. We, we don't need to vote on that. Just, just consider it tabled. Um, 7.2 is, uh, is a revised item on the amicus curiae brief for Grimm versus Gloucester. And Deborah handed around, uh, you've seen, I hope, emails on this, that um, I apologize for the lateness, but that was just the way it happened. Oh, uh, just a copy for me, okay. Okay, thanks. Um, Deborah made a copy for me of a, she consulted with um, Scott Cameron, which uh, I very much appreciate that initiative. Excellent. Um, and let me just read what Scott Cameron has to say. It is my belief that the WCUU SD board, reflecting as it does the values and interests of the community members it represents, must decide not just whether it supports the policy issue presented by this case, but whether its support for that issue should take the form of participation as an amicus party. I note that the issues presented by Gavin in this case appear to me to be consistent, that is, consistent, with the policy of the state of Vermont vis-a-vis -vis public restrooms. Absent a review of the decisions of the various trial and appellate courts to date in this matter, it is impossible for me to provide you with a prediction or even an educated guess as to what might happen on appeal. I do note that the latest ruling by the U.S. District Court in Virginia held in favor of Gavin's substantive claim. I have no information about the cost of participating as an amicus in this case. Are the amicus parties bearing any part of the cost? That issue should be clear before the board makes a decision. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. So, um, I think you've had a chance, you've been briefed, I, I guess, that the Washington Central Supervisory Union Board did join uh, as an amicus party in this, in this suit back in 2017. Montpelier Public Schools did as well. Um, just as we did with the um, Cross Vermont Trail Network, uh, we would be reaffirming a decision made by a predecessor board if we were to um, uh, just renew our participation as an amicus, uh, as a friend of the court. So, um, what do you think? Do we want to, first of all, Let's do this properly, even though it's late. I'm not giving up on discipline. Um, how about a motion to reaffirm the Washington Central Supervisor Union Board's 2017 decision to join as an amicus curiae on the side of Grimm v. Gloucester? So I will make that motion. Chris okay. moves. I'll second. Dorothy seconds. Um, discussion. The part Scott mentioned about cost is a concern to me as far as I don't want to just sign my name on something that's coming out of Virginia and I don't have control over or know what we might get billed for. Mm -hmm. So that's a concern to me. I don't remember us joining it 
That doesn't mean it didn't have, I don't remember it as a Washington Central Board. Um, I don't remember the cost being associated with it previously. Um, and, it, yeah. and, and I don't think there would be, but is there, do we know an, do we have an answer to that question? We, we do not. There was no time to get an answer to that question. It was not mentioned in the original email. And what I would suggest is, if you were to, if the board were to authorize me to communicate our decision to Rob Boyd, the, the attorney, I would just make clear that um, I'm authorized, provided you vote this way, authorized to, um, to reaffirm the earlier decision on behalf of the new board, but I am not authorized to commit any funds to that. So this was, we could do it under the same terms as the board did previously, and, and I know we haven't paid any costs since then because we presented a bill, yeah. uh, and it's been two years, yeah. and they've been multiple appeals up and down. Yeah. So, and, and I would bet it's, I bet it's a program. Yeah, this is being done by, pro bono by Pillsbury. Yeah, yeah. I know it <coughs> Working with the ACLU. Yeah. I don't, we, we aren't signing on as a party in the case. No, as a friend, friend of the court. Friend of the court. Yeah. 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 So not, yeah, we should be that since we're not as parties, we're as friend of the yeah. court. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would be really? absolutely shocked if any costs were incurred. Yeah. This is not a fundraising. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah, and I, I was trying to look for a minute, and I'm trying to remember now, and I, I we did get a, a Matthew brought it over at that meeting. And I, yeah, I, I remember clearly now because everybody voted yes. <coughs> so I don't know if you remember that meeting. We were at the cafeteria. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Like, and I, it was two years ago. Yeah. No, I remember it too. Mm -hmm. um, so the it motion. Took me a while to remember it just. <laughs> Lisa, could you read the motion back? The reason I remember it. Um, or Chris, if you remember what you said, I don't know. Well, I think I was the one who sort of said it. Um, oh. that it would be to reaffirm the WCSU board's 2017 decision to join as a friend of the court, as an amicus curiae, on the side of Grimm versus Gloucester. Okay. I was wondering if we had to put in something about cost, but if we're reaffirming something, I, I think I'm fine with it. I just wanted it clear. Excellent. Okay. Any? You want to put, I mean, do you want to put on the same terms that we did previously? Because I'm, or you don't think it's necessary? I don't think it's necessary. I think necessary. if we're reaffirming, that's no. yeah. to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Are we ready to vote that? I would just like to note that it, I became aware today after reading about this that this is uh, November 20th is, this is the 20th, um, observance of Transgender Remembrance Day, which memorializes uh, transgender people who have been killed and murdered. Um, so I think it is particularly auspicious to take this action today. Great. Questions? All right. In that case, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, next, moving on to personnel, approved hires. In your package this evening is one nomination form for a long-term substitute Mary Wheeler for East Huntley, who will be serving as a substitute for Samantha Gelfman, uh, excuse me, East Huntley and Callis. She's a hard year music teacher. And the person who um, is doing the work has both uh, experienced teaching music and drama students since 1992, and we're pleased to have her. We're also um, pleased to be able to uh, invite at as a shared or sharing of time and service. Uh, some of our music staff from uh, the district, in particular U32, who are going to take on the band component of the music instruction. We're really pleased. That's not a, a motion that you will need to take this evening, but we're pleased that that they stepped up to offer that support. So we would like your approval on this long term substitution. Thank you. Motion? I'll make a motion. Floor moves. Second. Chris seconds. Thank you. Any further discussion? Questions? I, I have a, a question. Sure. How she got her degree? 
11 years after she had her experience? Yeah. Well, you could have been teaching before you had your degree. You could have been in a private school. I don't have her resume. Okay. Her resume. She was. She was a teacher at private school. Okay. Yeah. And, and in nonprofit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're a private school instructor, you aren't required to have a Correct. teaching license. I just I saw that and we don't normally see that, so I was a little wondering. It says she's, she's been teaching since 1992. Yeah. That's a very good question. She sounds like an interesting person. Good. I think that's probably more common in the arts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, ready to vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Um, board operations, 9.1, where we delinquents are about to be reminded. I started a list, and I haven't finished it. Um, Up to the delinquents? Take a man engagement. Oh, I know. It says distorting list of the delinquents who went. Would you like me to There's follow up individually with board members if I could help them with this, you know, like a phone call? Yes. And then there's one more thing. Carla asked me to remind you guys that she's willing to come to a board meeting. There's several that are delinquent and have them the papers that Deborah gave us at the last meeting, and she's willing because she needs that some of you uh, delivered the documents, but then has the document that she needed to. Uh -huh. Has she let us know that? It, well, so she, we were having a meeting the last time. Because I did, and I said to Renee, is this all in? And she said, yes, you'll hear otherwise. Yeah, so, early. so she's willing to come. So the question is, if we want kind of to come early to one of our meetings and everybody has their document to, because she needs to verify with the document. Would that be the best, or do you guys want to stop individually? I'm going to be there one day. I'll do it for for the board. So I'm just, it's just a reminder. We're trying to be something. Okay, so um, Deborah is going to publicly shame us on community partnerships. Is that right? Uh, no, I think private. Private yes. shame. Yes. <laughs> Public shame comes later. Okay. Oh, it's worse. Um, <laughs> I think there's a week that in the back at the moment. I don't know if you guys are okay. Okay. Um, future agenda items. Um, remain on the future, except for solar power. Um, we we finally we have a, a bite on that, and, and my memory already is. Um, we got an email tonight. The students, the students that you think do are working. Yes, and we. And they should be. Yeah. And we asked them to be shut. They wanted to attend one of their meetings. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's that's for the future. Um, so just for the information of the board, I think it's important that, that you know that, um, that Deborah, Floor, Jonas, and I uh, met with our counterparts on the Montpelier board uh, a week ago on Monday, just to talk. You know, nothing, no agenda, no, um, no, no, no agenda in all senses of the, of the term. Um, but, it just makes so much sense to be communicating. Yeah. And uh, let's see where it goes. Is that with who? Sorry. Montpelier. 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 Um, thanks. Right. OK. We'll talk Yes. Yeah. So um, why don't we move to go into the executive session? I move to go into the executive session. Dorothy second. Floor <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>